How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop and today we're trying to get the final touches on the table saw joiner combination and uh, it's the motor needs to be mounted this uh, dust chute right here uh, needs to be mounted on the joiner get the belt on adjusted properly things like that hopefully we'll get the wiring done even and maybe get it running it's a lot to do in a video but uh, We'll see how far we can get here. So uh, stick around, and thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Stick with me on the project. We're almost to the finish line. Thank you. This is the chute. Now I, I chemically stripped it and then mechanically cleaned it too. It was kind of tough shape. Uh, straightened it out a little bit. Had some cracks up here to uh, repair. But little more cleanup and uh, just wipe her down I think she's ready to prime there we go shoots on that was kind of a pain uh, having to loosen all this up and lift a little bit to get the little bolts in there but looks pretty good you know so the chips are thrown down here and they'll come right out that's nice having a shoot they they They'll pile up they pile up real nice uh, off a joiner and a planer like this they'll make a nice nice pile easy to clean up a few measurements here on the lining up pulleys and motor and all that well right now the where I have them set center to center is about 12 and a quarter inches between these two and I can make it larger by at least an inch it looks like and down here on the motor you know 13 something inches would be possibly doable. I might have to flip around the, uh, flip these around the other way so their hubs are on the outside. Uh, I can probably get that. The 12 and a quarter was a, basically impossible. So, so we'll try to shoot for 13 something inches and I'll push these in toward the machines closer to, to get that setting. Except this one. Pretty much that's all the way in. As you can see here, there's quite a bit of flexibility on where that goes and clearances for the belt and things like that. So, and this is already has a hub out, so I'm gonna push it pretty much, pretty much all the way over. Center to center now is 13 and an eighth. And I've made Teflon pads for it also. So it actually makes it slide easy and makes it easily adjustable but it uh, it protects your paint surfaces and everything too but anyway these aren't tight there's slots on the table that run this way so we can shift the motor back and forth a little bit and then there's slots in the motor that run this way and those are smaller than the slots here but still half an inch or so back and forth and about an inch this way so, so moving my motor over Pretty much all the way. Let's see how that is. Let me try to get the motor centered between the pulleys first, or somewhere close. Okay, I'm fairly close, uh, back and forth here with the motor, so they're centered. And uh, now we'll move. Try to move it around the pulleys. Okay, I flipped these around so the hubs are out. And this one is almost in as far as it, it can go. And this one's got a little bit, about a half inch to the motor space there. Uh, but we're 13 and an eighth apart, and they look pretty darn good as far as putting a straight edge up in there. Uh, they look pretty good. So we'll put some belts on and get those fitted up. Now I'm going to be using a link belt for this. They're really nice because you can uh, just twist these and pop them out. So one, I ordered two. They're each five feet long. But for one side, five feet's too long, and one side's not long enough. So um, I'll take some out of this one. I should be able to make the other one uh, make it longer. So they both fit. And they're the right color. What, what odds are that, huh? Something about link belts. So when they come, they're all twisted and rolled up. Um, and they're kind of a pain to get straightened out. So 
So what, what you do is put them around a pulley that is something solid now. Hook them on there and pull. Pull nice and hard and stretch it. Turn it a little bit, pull and stretch. Pull and stretch. Go all the way around this like this. Just like that. Keep pulling and stretching all the way around. And then about one or two times around, it will stay the shape of a belt and the way and the orientation you want it to be. You can see there. See how it's too long? Right? So we need to shorten it up by I don't know, six, eight inches, quite a bit. But this one, so it goes up here with a hole, and then it comes way down here, it goes over here. There's a little bit of work to do this. So I just held that with the pliers, give it a little bit of a twist, and you can flip that out of the slot. Not too bad. Yeah, I'll take out eight inches or so. Just twist a little bit, flip it out. Yeah, that's probably, if I pull it so you can get it stretched, it's probably a little on the loose side. Maybe one more link. But we can uh, run it there and we'll see what the vibration is or how much it's flopping around. Now these are supposedly the smoothest type of running belt you can get. And they're nice and flexible and they grip good, so we're giving them a try. All right, I got this one in. Now I got this one quite a bit tighter. I only added two links to it, and it's quite it's quite a bit tighter than the other one. So I might take out one link on this other side. But I think I'm going to temporary wire it, and we're going to give it a spin. All right, we're going to try it one belt at a time to see how it goes and see how the motor performs. So my attention on it. Now, there's no blade on the saw. This is on the table saw side. Time to come up to speed. So I think I need to adjust brushes a little bit more. Nice and straight. Uh, it's got a little flop in it. Probably take a link out. Probably a little too long still. And now stretch. You know, with time. So that's the nice thing about it. It's adjustable. And I don't have to move the motor around. Uh, nice advantage of that belt. All right. Had to take pulley off. I adjusted the brushes over a little bit and I took one link out of the belt so it's a little bit snugger. Oh yeah, starts better, faster, and that belt running just smooth as can be. Alright, I got the belt on here. I took two links out of it and that one's still, this one's still a little looser. Uh, this one's tighter now and let's give her a go. It starts up fairly quickly, it has more load on it, but it does get up to full speed. On it. You might have to adjust those just a tiny bit more for running both at once. Normally, you're not going to you're not going to run both of these at once. You're going to do one at a time, and uh, that's about it. No matter what tool you want to use, no need to run both of it if you don't need it. Anyway, I got my strobe set up. Turn it 17, 84, 83. Right there, it's solid. No variance even, so it's perfect. It's coming right up to speed. Good start. And it starts with bolt without a problem.
So after much deliberation, the uh, switch on off, right, is going to go here. And we're going to bring the wires from the motor up through the bottom and then run a pigtail out the back. That way the cord is away from you, we can put a strain relief and things like that. So that's, tell you, a lot of deliberations on where to put this. All right, we're all plugged in. Let's see. Perfect. I think it works. I love it. Few more screws and bolts to tighten and uh, set up on the table saw and we'll be ready to put a blade on her. All right, I went to check my arc speeds of the cutter head and I want I need to do the table saw also, but when I checked the cutter head, I was way too slow. And so I go back and I read the uh, Delta stuff. I, I, of course, had the pulleys on the motor backwards. This should be the seven-inch pulley, and we should get. Four, they, went, they say about 4,200 RPM. Well, they say 4,200. They say 4,200 RPM on the spindle here, and right now we got 42, 4201, 4,200 exactly, actually. 4203. Yep, 4201, 4203. So we're right on the money on this. And of course, I had to adjust the belt and uh, for the right thing. But we're really looking good. We all make mistakes. This is what happens when I film. I end up making, they're stupid mistakes, but. I'll end up making them and I have to go back, refill, 
and and correct me it, uh, uh, to make sure I tell you the right information. <laughs> but that's running really good, and uh, I really like it. Uh, checking the table saw speed, spindle speed. We're right at 305059. Built up manual says 3100, so we're right there. It'll be good. It'll be right around 8,000 or so uh, feet per minute. 8,100 feet per minute. You know, we got this uh, all together. Uh, next, I need to uh, set the table up and make sure it's going to be square with the spindle. But I also just got the bearings in for the spindle for the table saw. I'm going to change the bearings in the spindle on the table saw to new bearings. And then I'm going to square this all up. And then we'll cut some wood. We got everything right now. So I'm sorry for a little mix up in the, uh, when I was first setting up all the belts and getting everything square with the wrong pulleys on the rich side. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, stupid mistakes. But... Sometimes it happens, uh, but they're on the right side now, and the belts are right, and they're all that. So, uh, but we got the magnetic starter in. That's a Tico is the brand of the magnetic starter. I bought it off of Amazon. I think it's like thirty-five bucks. Uh, yeah, maybe in China, but it seemed like most of them are. Uh, but it, it's it's a nice unit. It, it's all sealed up. Shouldn't get really any dust or anything in there. Happy with the installation switch and the wire going, the power lead going out the back. Now I left that kind of long. It's, uh, you know, I don't know, six feet long, maybe seven feet uh, for now. Uh, my son-in-law wants to change that. We'll change it. But th that's that's good enough. And we're running on a number 10 extension cord, uh, even though it doesn't need to be that big. But... We'll have less line loss, especially running on 110. Uh, you don't need any line loss, and it's a nice short one, and it, it will work out fine. But the, it's a nice clean installation with coming up underneath into here. I was a little hesitant about doing that, but uh, it, it, it came out really nice as far as the clean installation goes. We'll get that cover on there here soon after I engrave it. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Thanks for sticking around. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be an awesome, awesome saw.